Hello. Hello, my name's Gordon from Drayson Design and I'm Taylor from The Creative Thinker. And welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast and vidcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses over the last seven days. And uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome Um, back. Apologies for not being with you last week. Um, We just had a few things going on and it was just impossible for us to do our show so we do apologize for that we hope nobody was too disappointed and hopefully you'll enjoy what we have to talk about today so first of all any news Um, there's some big news actually isn't there like the biggest news is that uh, twitter has been purchased yeah or it will have been purchased it's been agreed by um uh, Elon uh, elon musk yeah i was thinking of his name i was thinking musk that's not right Elon Musk has bought Twitter. So it's very interesting because uh, lots of people have said that they're going to leave Twitter now that it's been bought by Elon. I don't know why. I don't know the reasons for it. Um, he has said that uh, he's going to be sort of a bit more laid back with the content and allowing people to write a bit more of what they want. Um, the EU have said, well, that's all fine, but we have rules in place, uh, which means that you can't say it, you know what you want. You, as Twitter, need to make sure you moderate certain things and make sure that uh, fake news is not being uh, transmitted via your platform. So lots of interesting things happening. And he spent, I think it was $44 billion buying Twitter. Yeah. Forty-four billion dollars. That's just madness, isn't it? <sighs> probably just pocket change for him, I yeah, guess. Probably. Any news from your side? Not from me, no. Okay, so we're going to get straight on to our topics for today. Uh, shall I go first? Yeah, you can go. Every year, we have a magic convention for children's entertainers. It's specific for children's entertainers and it's called Tricks in the Sticks and it's spelled T-R-I-X and Sticks is spelled S-T-I-X. So it's Tricks in the Sticks. Um, And the reason it's called that is because it is in the middle of nowhere. There is a hotel there. There is another hotel next door to it and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else anywhere nearby. Um, So it really is in the sticks. And it takes place over a day and the previous evening. So I'm going to sneeze. One second. Oh dear, pardon me. Um, I've got hay fever and uh, it's starting to kick in because of all the things growing outside because it's spring now. So apologies for that. Um, So yes, it takes place over uh, a full day and the evening beforehand and people have to stay in the hotel or the hotel next door uh, if they want to go. And we have talks and shows and we meet up with other children's entertainers and we talk about children's entertaining. Um, And uh, I'm, I'm very glad uh, that I am actually speaking at this event. I spoke at the last event that we did with my double act partner, Paul Longhurst, which if you've uh, been a long time supporter of this channel, you will know because he's been in an episode uh, a long time ago. And we spoke about a, uh, a way to book shows as a children's entertainer uh, with PTA shows, which worked really well. And that was the last time we did it live, which was 2019. Uh, 2020 obviously didn't happen. Um, 2021, we had a virtual one, which was uh, on Zoom. And this is the first time we've been back since 2019, and I'm speaking again. And I'm going to be speaking on software tools. So one of the things that gets me excited is looking for new tools and things that will help me. Um, both in my business and personal life and, you know, things that I can play with, new shiny toys, if you like, in the software world. And there's a lot of entertainers who don't get at all excited by that sort of thing. And so they just, you know, they're not really interested. But because I am interested in it and I research things quite a bit, um, I'm putting together a list of certain tools that I'm going to tell everyone about and going to 
have a place where we can all talk about tools that we've found and that we've used and we, that we think might be of use and interest to other uh, children's entertainers. And in fact, the, the group that we're going to create for this is, is going to be for all entertainers, not just children's entertainers, because a lot of it is very overlapping with other different types of entertainment. Um, now, the reason I mention this is not because I'm, you know, really pleased to be doing it, which I am, but it's more to do with the fact that by doing this, all of the attendees and the people who watch the talk will see me as being an expert in the field. It's a bit like becoming a published author. If you write a book and you have a book to your name on a certain subject, you become an expert in that field. And it's backed up by the fact you have a published book. Um, even if it's a self-published book, you still yeah. become, you know, the authority is still there. And so this is one of the reasons that I like doing these talks. It's because it, it puts me, it, it, it positions me uh, as a person who knows what they're talking about. And therefore, in the future, people with questions that are sort of in this realm will come to me. And quite often they'll ask me questions about it. They'll ask me to do things. Um, they may even use my services as someone that they trust to, to do a good job. Um, and so as far as marketing goes, it's a really good way of positioning yourself as an expert. And this is just one of the ways you can do it. Uh, writing the book is another. Um, doing any sort of speaking, whether it be at a, an event like I'm doing or on an online seminar, um, even if it's, you know, a local BNI, that sort of type of place. If you do a talk and you are an authority on something, you become the expert. And being the expert is worth a lot of money. People will seek you out and come to you because you're the expert. Um, and it, it takes you out of the realm of uh, being one of the people that people can hire. So, for example, if I were to be an expert in web design to a group of people, then I'm no longer going to be one of a few people that they can contact to, uh, to, to quote for web design. I, it will be a choice of either me or one of the others. So all of the others are then grouped into one group and then I'm separate on my own. So I become, uh, uh, I, I get the, a much higher chance of getting the work than all of the others put together. Um, which is a really good position to be in. And it's something I like to do with the magic as well. So as a children's entertainer, for example, I like to be the children's entertainer, the authority on it. And so again, when people in this area are looking for a children's entertainer, it's going to be, shall we have Gordon or shall we have one of the others? So I get a 50-50 chance at getting the booking between me and everybody else, which is a really high percentage. Um, and one of the downsides with being the expert or the authority is that people think you're going to be more expensive. And that could very well be the case but not always. Um, but the, the very fact that you can potentially get all this extra work by being an expert, I think outweighs any other disadvantage that may come from this. So there you go. If you get the opportunity, become your expert in your field for a group of people, however big or small that group might be, because it will end up being good for you. Yeah. Have you experienced this? Yeah, so in the kind of web development groups that I'm in, um, a couple of them where uh, I reply and comment um, to a lot of people, uh, mainly in the Facebook groups, uh, because I reply to people and give them solutions, um, I'm kind of looked at as one of the, you know, the, the experts in the group. Um, and because of that, I've managed to get work um, from it. People asking me, can you know, build this or... Um, actually building relationships with other uh, web de developers and designers that you know have taken me on not taken me on but uh, have used me multiple times and on an ongoing basis um, and so yeah it's been it's been really good 
Um, and it's nice because, you know, like you said, it, it's, it makes you stand out and looked, you know, looked upon. <clears throat> Anything you were to release is highly regarded because you already have that position and that status. Yep. Um, so when I first launched something, it was, you know, it was okay. People were interested. But then anything else I've launched since then, and just because I'm more well known, is very highly regarded and, and things like that. So it does kind of lend you to, um, you know, better opportunities, essentially, because if you're, you know, say I release something for other web designers and developers, um, you know, people are more likely to give, have trust in me, um, you know, for the price, you know, say it's a um, couple hundred hundred pounds or so, people are more likely to be like, okay, that's 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 okay, because I've already built up that reputation. It's got a good name behind it. Whereas if you are someone that's, you know, maybe it's like your first or second post in a group, people are going to be like, oh, okay, you're asking for all this money, but do you have any evidence to back up what you're trying to sell and, and who does what you do? Or if you're trying to sell a service, again, do you have the kind of... Track record. Yeah, ex- essentially. Hmm. Oh, that's really that's really good. I'm glad it's worked for you as well. So there you go. That, I didn't... I didn't really say this with that in mind, but you know Taylor has experienced the same, which is great news. So there you go. Doesn't always have to be though. You seeking to be an expert. So for me, it very much just happened because I had an interest in the the area and the subject, and I was just trying to help people. You and actually I, fell into it yeah. without realizing sort of the thinking behind it. Yeah. You just ended up doing it in in instinctively. Yeah, I was just trying to be, a, you know, helpful and, and uh, a good person to reply to other people's questions and, and you know, um, bugs and issues. And because of that, you know, people kind of put me up as as one of the others that are kind of well known and, and um, you know, experts in that in that area. So I didn't do it to, to get to that level, but because of just kind of showing up and always replying to, to comments and questions, I kind of got there. It's a really good technique to to think about and work out how you can apply it to to what you do. Cool. Good. So what would you like to speak about today, Taylor? So I think I've spoken about this before, but my personal website, something that I've had an ongoing battle with for the past three years or so, um, mainly because it's something that is never really finished. And as soon as I save a page or... Um, or a section of my site and I build out an integration it's already out of date Um, because I'm always thinking about new ways to do something new techniques new technology just come along and you kind of think okay well that's probably a better way but the way I have it set up and built doesn't allow for that and so it requires a full rebuild or you know requires me to redo what I've done and I I got to a point where I was kind of quite happy with with the website that I've built um, I'd started importing all of my data. So for people that don't know, I track a lot of data about myself. It's called Quantitative Self, if you're interested in finding out more about it. And essentially, you track things. So uh, what you eat, so your calories, um, your sleep, all the activities you do. So if you do a bike ride or walking or running, things like that. Um, if you write articles and stuff or write notes, um, social media posts, uh, countries that you visited, all of this stuff is things that I track. Um, most of it is automated, so it comes from the service that I use and gets imported into my website. And the reason I do this is because if, you know, okay, give, to give an example, I use Strava to track all of my bike rides, my dog walks, and my runs and things like that. If in 10 years it is no longer in service, I will no longer have that data. So the reason for importing it is to give me access and to own my data, essentially. And so it means that in the future, if something better comes along or, you know, the service shuts down, I don't lose that data and I still have all of the data in the format that I want because I can merge it into my website in the way that I want it formatted. Um, And I recently came across a website that was shared and he, the guy does something very similar he carries uh, he, he's created an app that he has on his phone that logs his current location uh in like an interval something like five ten minutes and it gets sent to a server where he stores it and so he he, he logs the coordinates and things like that 
and he also tracks other things like air, air temperature and things like that. And he, on his website, then when you load his website, the background like image is a uh, scaled out view. So, you know, maybe like a town view or map of his current location. Which is fascinating because when we went to look at the site, when you showed it to me, he was actually on an aeroplane at the time. Yeah. And so I sort of went, really? Okay. So we refreshed and sure enough, the back the background changed to a new yeah. map location, which was amazing. Yeah. So this guy does, you know, very, very similar. He tracks what he eats, what he drinks. Um, all of his Twitter posts get put into his website. All of his bike rides, his walks, his taxis, his all logged on his app. Um, and, you know, he has like all of these, he has current, uh, current stats. So it's like current whereabouts and what he's doing. But he also logs all of this other information. So he uses Foursquare to check in to places. And again, they get pushed to his website. And this is all automated. But what it means is if he moves away in the future to another system, he still owns all of the data and he doesn't have multiple multiple data sets in, in different apps. And it's a, it's a really um, interesting just to look in to see how he's built this and how he set it up. Um, he actually uses WordPress, which is what I found quite interesting and he just has a new post type for every different thing he tracks so whether it be food whether it be check-ins uh, bookmarks was quite interesting so if he's finding something on the internet he stores it the link of the url and the title um, in in a post and he just submits it so then that just links to the post that he kind of um, bookmarked and i guess you could get a screenshot as well couldn't you yeah you wanted to so he has a lot of interesting stuff and, and it was really interesting to see how he had laid it out set it up and managed everything mainly um, and so that gave me quite a bit of inspiration to actually get my website redone and finished in a way that was manageable and scalable for the future so the one thing that I've struggled with previously was making it scalable what if I want to add a new type of data set in there later can I do that well the way I set it up not really Whereas now, because of the way I've seen him do it, using post types for, uh, for all of his separate data sets, it makes it a lot more manageable. I want to add a new data set, add as a new post type. Yes, it's probably not the best way, and you probably could do it other ways, but it's the easier, easiest way to manage that isn't going to be not as performant, essentially. And so I was starting to redo it, and I got pretty much most of the template and foundation built. Um, it's mainly just now setting everything up to import the data, uh, format the data, import it uh, for archived existing data, and then set up all the automations so that it's easy ongoing um, and it just sits in the background and collects all the data. Sounds great. Now, but I can see a lot of people who are watching or listening to this going, well, why would you want to keep all of this data? Why do you want to collect it all? Who cares what you ate on a specific day or, you know, what, uh, you know, what you weighed or why, why do you want to keep all this information? I, I just find data really fascinating, especially, you know, you can do, you can create graphs based on different things. So um, you can create a hypothesis, hypothesis um, you know, and saying, okay, so when you know was i eating more calories when i was working out at the gym or you know or not um you can very easily make a correlation you can see the activity you're doing and compare it and you can you know you can graph things like that um it's also just again similar to the way that um the reason i started one of the, the this podcast is i wanted to be able to look back and see you know what, what have i done how have i changed since when we first started which if you went back to episode one, you would be able to see a lot has changed. Um, the background's pretty much the exact same, but the way that we are filming it, the way that we are kind of streaming it and uh, creating the graphics, the, how the website's managed, um, our faces and and um, have have changed. Transcriptions now as well. Yeah. The, the um, translations on the on the YouTube videos. So yeah, so a lot of things have changed, which. It's really interesting. I think it's an extension of what people use their photo gallery for. I think a lot of people take photos to make memories and to keep track of what they've done and you know what they've done that day. So you go to the theater, you take a photo just so if you look back and go, okay, what did I do one year ago? When you know you have different services that say one year ago today you did this, 
similar to how Facebook. Does so it's that. a little bit like a like a personal journal. Yeah, personal online journal. Yeah, I think I think yes, it's it's essentially it's meant that. for you. But if other people are interested, they can access it and view it as well. Yeah, I could very easily put it behind a password protected. Um, you know, so only I can see it if I wanted to. But I think it's quite interesting. You know, especially for me, I spent the past week going back just looking at this person's website just because I found it so interesting because I was thinking I was saying okay he's just checked into an airport lounge okay he's now on this flight he's just you know he's just eating this food um you know it it does feel a bit weird because you're kind of like in their life but not but I just find it fascinating because you get get to see a bit in into what people do and what people get up to and the other thing is if if people aren't interested in this sort of thing they just won't visit the website yeah so it's only going to be viewed by people who are mildly interested in some yeah. way yeah it's not something for me to try and monetize not trying to get gain any um traction on seo or anything like that um the blog post and things like that are pretty much just for my pure interest that i find interesting um any notes that i come across or things that i find interesting i will kind of share but again it's not for anyone else but me that's not the reason I created it it wasn't for me to go hey look at my amazing life it's for me to be able to go okay this is what I was doing that day oh that was that was a nice memory things like that and you know what when when you get married have children it might be the sort of thing that your your children will get a bit of a kick out of you know being able to go into a specific day and see what you were thinking or where you were going what you were doing you know what you ate you know that sort of thing i've just thought of something else you can add to your your um post types yeah soda streams so this was something that i was i was debating about and it doesn't make sense due to duplicated content um i want to create a separate okay. site for the soda stream and so we can have all of the data on a separate site um because it's currently stored in a spreadsheet so i could very easily do but it's something very similar with with my my current website, but in a new separate install. We can have an online portal for yeah. our SodaStream usage. But the reason that I say it's duplicated content is because if I'm going to be importing all of my food and uh, drinks that I consume, mm-hmm. then having a SodaStream and having the drinks that I have will be duplicated because yep. I will already have tracked it inside of my calorie tracker, and so by creating a new post for when I have a drink, it would be in there twice because the cola would be there. Agreed. So that was the only reason I didn't. Um, Makes sense. But yeah, I can always link to it and say, look, if you're interested in seeing my soda stream usage or our family soda stream usage, you can check it out here. But I won't be logging it on my website just because it would be duplicated content. I don't see the... Makes perfect sense. So Don't see it. So yeah, that was that was the reason I didn't. But yeah, I would still be able to have a log of everything that I've eaten that day, which I think would be quite interesting. So when it gets launched, you can tell everyone about it and well, tell them how to get to I've it already, if they want to see it? I've already technically launched it. It's now just... The, the base framework is built. It's just now a matter of going through, adding all the data and setting up all the automations. Do you want to share the address if yeah. anyone's interested? Um, so it's taylordrayson.com uh, and you'll be able to see... and um, There should be a picture of me um, in in the top header... Um, I kind of tried to make it look like a social media profile, um, something similar to like Facebook or Twitter, because I thought that was quite fitting. It's kind of like a profile of me. Hmm. Um, it's a journal. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, you can you can check out the site. You can explore it. Currently, um, as of recording this, it is it only has my activities and uh, my, my blog posts that I've written. But... In the future, it should hopefully have all of them in there and it should be kind of up to date. I'm looking at a way to be able to ping my phone location um, at intervals throughout a day to also create like a, a forward slash now page where it says what I'm where I currently am and what I'm currently doing, which I think would be quite interesting. Yeah, um, there may be security issues involved there, but but yes, I, I, I understand the uh, the thinking behind it. You can find out how often you go to the gym and so on without actually doing anything. In fact, I think you can set up a geofence and have a have something happen if you go to the gym. So you could have you could do that automatically as well. Anyway, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, go and have a look if you've got any comments. 
leave them below. And uh, that is everything that I have to say. Same with me. So thank you for joining us. As always, you can like, share and subscribe on YouTube and on Facebook. You can also go to our website thisweekwith.co.uk to find all of our past episodes. And that's it for today. We look forward to seeing you next week, 1pm on Friday. Until then, uh, my name's Gordon and I'm from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from the Creative Tinker. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.